So a tropical biologist is someone who really can adapt to the moment. We work in incredibly harsh conditions. It will rain every day. Uh, you'll get muddy, you'll get wet, you'll get sweaty. And while you're out in the jungle actually doing your work, you need to do it in a rigorous manner. So we have to be adaptable, uh, but it also allows us to ask some really fundamental questions about life and how life came to be, how it exists, and why there's so much, so much in the tropics. Panama is interesting to scientists mostly because of its biodiversity. There's lots of different environments that we're going to see on the study abroad, from the cloud forest to the reef to the rainforest, and all the sort of species that migrate through here has been interesting to scientists. So my name is J.P. Lawrence. I am uh, a biologist who works in Lyman Briggs College. I am a tropical ecologist. Uh, I, I primarily work on uh, understanding how uh, animals communicate and how they uh, communicate um, to avoid predation. So I work on poison dart frogs primarily. My name is Melissa Trenko. I teach in Lyman Briggs College and the Department of History at Michigan State University. Um, I'm a historian of science by training. So I teach in science and society at Briggs. So we're leading a program called American Colonialism and the Creation of Biodiversity. So it's looking at why American scientists were coming to Panama, the impacts of some of the work, the impacts of some of the questions they were asking, the field stations they created, as well as some of the biology that they were doing and what it meant to be a tropical biologist. So I think on the study abroad, it's going to be interesting to see who the scientists are who are doing some of this work. And so I'm going to encourage you to watch for when Panamanians are doing the work and what kind of work they're doing versus when foreign scientists are coming to this place and the kinds of questions that these two different groups of people are asking. We're going to do tons of things on the program. I have a lot of energy, you're going to realize. <laughs> so we're, we have hikes uh, in the cloud forest. We have snorkeling in the reef. We have visits to various field stations like the Smithsonian, Barrow, Colorado Island, which was created when they flooded the Can Panama Canal. They made a man-made lake. And that island has been sort of hub for American scientists ever since. So Gamboa is a science town. It's sort of inhabited by the Smithsonian STRI, the Trop uh, Smithsonian Tropical Research Institute, and it's a lowland rainforest. So when we're there, we'll uh, have a number of different activities, like going to Barrow, Colorado Island. We'll also have the opportunity to do birding on Pipeline Road, which is one of the most diverse roads in the world for, for birding. We'll also have opportunity to go around uh, Gamboa, go into the canal, actually see Gatun Lake, and see a lot of the species that we normally would find or associate with the rainforest. So things like monkeys, toucans, big old lizards, crocodiles, caiman, things, things like that. Bocas del Toro is a archipelago almost on the uh, edge of the Costa Rican border. And this is a really neat area biogeographically. So for me, this is where I started my work on poison dart frogs. And so this has been really interesting to me. But because it's an archipelago, we're sitting in this gorgeous Caribbean island. We're also gonna have opportunity to be able to go snorkeling and see the Caribbean reefs in the area. So we'll have opportunity to see stingrays and butterfly fish and parrot fish. So it's a very cool place, a very relaxed uh, place. They very much embrace island time and island living. So it's, it's one of my favorite places in the world to go. Cerro Punta is a cloud forest. So this is the cloud forest. This is probably what you traditionally think of as a rainforest. It is green everywhere. There are plants everywhere, moss everywhere. Absolutely gorgeous area. What we'll do here, we'll explore uh, this area. We'll also have the opportunity to do some really spectacular hikes and see some fantastic vistas along the way. We'll also have opportunity to find some potentially rare species around here. So this area is known for the Quetzal. This is a birder's dream bird. They're a very beautiful bird, bright green, long tail feathers. We'll also see lots of hummingbirds. So you can see right here on cue, 
um, uh, some of the hummingbirds that uh, will uh, are right at our right in front of our cabins. There's at least half a dozen species, including some giant violet saber wings that are very very common that we'll be able to see quite quite often. Students should know that the program that they're going to be wet. So your clothes are not going to dry for a few days. You might be some muddy. But it's also sort of a great opportunity to sort of see another country, experience another culture, to sort of look at the biodiversity, and I think you're going to have a lot of fun. So Panama is my favorite place uh, in the world. Uh, it's a, a confluence of the fauna from North America and South America, same with the, the flora. Um, I'm a biologist and I love uh, coming here and being able to see everything uh, that's around here. I'm most excited about being in these different environments in Panama and seeing um, just sort of a new species every day, every hour. Um, there's sort of lots to sort of see and do. And so I'm excited about all of that.